Okay, today I'm going to try a experiment making pumpkin bites. But instead of using eggs, since we're not going to cook this and we're going to freeze dry it, I'm going to use gelatin. And I'm going to use this agar agar powder. It's an Asian gelatin made from seaweed. And uh, I'm Look, been watching videos online and they make some really neat stuff with this gelatin. So I thought I'd give it a try with this stuff instead of using Jello brand gelatin. Let's see what the texture comes out like. So we're going to make it with this. So what I did was I had one large can of pumpkin mix and I mixed it according to the directions except for I didn't put any eggs in. And I only had one can of evaporated milk and I needed two cans so I put one can of evaporated milk and then one can, that same can I filled it back up with just normal milk. But other than that I stuck to the recipe on the can. So here we go. So first thing we need to do is I made about five cups of product. And with this particular agar agar, it's basically one teaspoon per cup. So five cups would be five teaspoons. So I got about a half a cup of water in there. I put five teaspoons of this agar agar powder in there. And we'll get a spoon. Get that stirred up. dissolved as I can. With agar agar you need to uh, have everything ready because it sets at room temperature pretty quick. So I've got my pumpkin mix over there set up, got my molds ready. To pour this into. And agar agar needs to be heated to just before boiling and then you take it off the heat. So let's get the heat on. The texture on this agar is, agar is totally different than jello. And I really like it freeze dried. I did do a sample of uh, just plain water with some sugar and drop some fruit in it and freeze dried that. And I really like the texture. It's like a really soft biscuit actually, or a cookie, sorry. Biscuit, that's the English in me coming out. Like a soft cookie, it's not, not hard at all. Crunchy, still dry, but kind of airy. And uh, I really like the texture, so. I'm hoping to get that same texture in this pumpkin pie mix so that we don't end up with something rock hard. Now this is starting to thicken up and I don't really want that thick right now. So I'm going to add another half a cup of water. When I put this in the mix, I want it to be runny, so it's easy to mix up. Okay, it's starting to thicken. It's just before boiling, I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat off and reposition my camera. Okay, so now we're going to mix this in for our pumpkin mix. Give that a really good mix. Okay, so put this off to the side so you can see what I'm doing. All I'm going to do is fill all these molds up with that mix. 
right to the top. The beauty about this agar agar is if this starts to get too solid for me to pour, I can just pop this in the microwave, heat it up again, and it'll turn to liquid again and it will still set once it cools down again. Which is pretty cool. Okay, so that's all my molds full. We'll just leave this sit at room temperature and that should set. If I made enough uh, agar agar in it, it should set it nice and solid, kind of like a jello, before I even freeze it. But we'll leave this sit at room temperature and see how set it gets. And I'll see you when I'm ready to put them in the freezer. Okay, I let that sit in my molds for about 30 minutes and it didn't set so that goes to tell me it wasn't going to set what I did it gives me an opportunity to show you the versatility of this stuff because you can reheat it and that reactivates the gel so since I messed around with it I'm going to take another half a cup of water and I'm going to go ahead and put two teaspoons of this powder in that water just so I can add a little bit more to that and give that a stir and get it all dissolved I'm just stirring it in my mixing glass here let that powder dissolve in there I'm going to put, what I did was obviously I dumped all my molds back into my pot here. I'm going to put my pumpkin on medium heat. I'm going to add this extra two spoons of agar agar powder. The rule of thumb is one teaspoon of powder to one cup of water or liquid liquid period liquid period I'm going to mix that in with that now on that medium heat I'm going to let this I'm going to definitely make sure I stir this constantly because this is really thick being pumpkin mix I don't don't want it to uh, burn to the bottom but irregardless, with the, with the powder, you're supposed to mix it constantly anyway. Otherwise, it'll gel up on the bottom of your uh, pan that you're boiling it in. And we're going to cook this up until it's boiling, boiling hot. I apologize for the mistake, but at least I'm showing, getting to show you that this powder is very versatile in that if you make a mistake like that, and you haven't poured it over fruit, and, which I'm going to be doing. But in this instance, I can just take it and reheat it. And that reactivates the, uh, the gel. Actually, as I'm sitting here stirring this, I'm thinking, maybe this is the better way to do it. Because I added sugar to this. And at least now the heat is going to dissolve that sugar. So maybe... You just mix it all in your pot. Mix your five spoons or however many cups. You could actually measure the liquid and see how much, many cups of liquid you have after you've mixed everything together. And then just get a measuring cup and add a little water and as many spoons as you need to match the amount of cups that you had in your uh, pumpkin pie mix here. And then do what I'm doing here. This might be that might be the better answer. Maybe uh, one of my Asian viewers will let me know the best way to do this. I mean, I can think of several ways. The uh, one way is to just put the milk in here and maybe the sugar, 
and the agar agar powder and bring it to a boil and then mix it with the pumpkin and spice and everything that's one way this way right here which is basically everything is all mixed together mix the agar agar powder in some water dump it in with this and then just bring it to a boil that might I think I think this might be the best way actually you definitely want that sugar to dissolve and the heat's going to dissolve the sugar so you might as well put the pumpkin with the seasoning in with it as well huh I don't know I'm rambling sorry about that okay that's just starting to boil so I'm hoping that that's hot enough I'm going to take the heat off and we'll get this over to the table okay let's try this again okay I'm much happier with that I don't know if you can see that but this is already starting to get a gloss on it over here I think these will set up so we'll see you when they set up and uh, We'll go from there. Okay. Before I pop this in the refrigerator, I just wanted to show you how this stuff sets up. So, this is set up in the mold now. Just kind of pull the edges away. And that's what that sets up like. And it won't melt at room temperature, as this set up at room temperature. But it's pretty cool stuff. But I want to taste this in its gelled state before I freeze dry it. The reason I want to taste that is because that tastes just like the same texture and everything, maybe even a little bit moister than if you had baked that in the oven. So these are now ready to go into the ref into the freezer. I'll freeze them solid, pop them out of the mold try them up and pop them into the freeze dryer. We'll see you when they come out of the freeze dryer. Okay, these are my pumpkin bites that I made using the agar agar. And I haven't tasted one yet freeze dried. You saw me taste one in the gelled state and they were really good. I th thought I'd give you a nice pretty close up of those, how they came out. Oh yeah, they looking good. They're looking very good. So, let's see what they taste like. Okay. So there they are. Let's see if we can break one. No, I can't break it. The inside of that is very airy and these have it tastes good tastes like pumpkin pie but they have a thick cookie taste a texture to them not too hard but I, I couldn't you know I can break it did you see that So, so I'd be happy with those in that dried state, but I'm going to show you something magic about agar agar. Okay, third time's a charm. The last last time I did this, it worked, but I think I made it too weak and I lost a lot of the flavor. So let's go through this again. So what I've done is I've taken 10 or 12 of those squares of the pumpkin pie freeze dry and powdered them, pulverized them in my blender into a nice fine powder. I got a half a cup there. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that half a cup in my saucepan and we're going to rehydrate it 
with water. I want to start off with one cup of water here. And that's too thin. So we put one cup of water, a half a cup of the powder. So I just pulverized another half a cup. So it's one to one. Let's see what that looks like. That's not going to thin out. So let's add another quarter cup of water. We'll do it in quarters. Okay. So that's one part pumpkin. And one and a quarter part water. And that's looking more like I can work with that. Last time I made it just too too watery. I mean, it's set, which is what we wanted to do, but it seemed to have lost a lot of its flavor. So this time I wanted to make it thicker. And I already know it'll set because I made it thinner and it set. Okay, that's just starting to boil. So we're going to turn the heat off. I'm going to get this over to my molds. Okay, there you are. So now you're going to take this and fill these molds with that pumpkin mix. And what we did was one part of the freeze, powderized, freeze-dried pumpkin pie filling that we made delicious cookies with. I, I call them cookies. It's almost a cookie texture. But we powderized those. Put one part of that powder and one and a quarter parts water and brought it to a boil and then you pour it in your pie crust, pour it in your molds however you like to do it this stuff sets at room temperature pretty quick that's why I didn't mind redoing this tonight Thanksgiving Eve because it's going to set so quick that I can demonstrate that to you tonight while I'm prepping my dinner for tomorrow. Kind of killing two birds with one stone. So I'm going to be up late. I might as well do some video editing, right? Let me taste that. Oh yeah. That's much better. It's already setting up in here. And there you have it. If I wanted to set that real quick, I could pop this in the fridge. But I'm not in any rush. So I'm going to leave it out here for a little bit. Then I'll come back and show you me uh, do a taste test and show you how that looks once we take it out of the mold. See you in a minute. Okay, so those have set for a while at room temperature. And they are set. So I want to show you how they come out. This is the uh, silicone mold I poured them into. Just break it off the mold and check that out. There you go. Flimsy it is. Let me taste that. Oh my gosh. If I didn't tell you that I didn't bake this, 
you wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> that, that tastes like baked pumpkin pie filling. Moist. Perfect, perfect texture. Oh my gosh, that is good. So, what you can do is, you know, I, I don't know if I've said this already, but if I have, I'm sorry for repeat myself, but I was real excited about doing these. So what you can do is make up a bunch of your pumpkin pie filling mix using whatever recipe you want, really. Just don't put fresh eggs in it because we're not going to bake it. And however many cups of mix that you make, measure it. And however many cups you do, use that many tables or teaspoons, that many teaspoons fulls of uh, agar agar powder. All right. Freeze dry that. You don't have to do it like I did in little molds. You can do it in a pour it in a tray and freeze dry it. Powder it. Once it comes out of the freeze dryer, powder it into a very fine powder. Fill your jar with it, and then anytime you want to make a pumpkin pie, have a graham cracker crust, because you don't have to bake that. Or those miniature little cups that are already baked. You can do anything you wanted, but let's say you wanted to make a pie. Graham cracker crust, you take out how many cups you need of the pumpkin pie mix from your, your powdered pumpkin pie mix. Put it in a saucepan, add the same amount plus a quarter of water to it, mix it all up, turn the heat on, bring it to a boil, take it off the heat, and then pour that into your graham cracker crust. Stick it in the fridge, and in 30 minutes, you'll have a pumpkin pie chilled, and it tastes the exact same texture as a baked pumpkin pie. I'm super, super, super excited about this because it opens up a lot of possibilities and I'm going to try a couple of them tonight, Thanksgiving evening, while I'm parboiling and all that stuff for tomorrow. Yeah, I got some real big possibilities on this that are game changers. Let's say other people have tried them and failed and I think we can make this work. So. I'm excited about it. I hope you're excited about it enough to watch uh, my upcoming videos. And that's my beeper telling me my real pumpkin pie is done in the oven. So uh, I'll get back to you on the next video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.